Hi, everybody. This is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week, we're going to take a look at how do you monitor your server. So you get your server up and running. We've walked through how to set up all of the services and things over here. And so now, as your server's running, what are some of the things you need to look for? How do you monitor your server? How do you take care of some of the things that are going on in the background? And so what I thought I'd do is cover a few of the items that we haven't covered yet uh, in the server series, and that's our alerts area, our logs, our stats. And then I also want to show you a way to be able to monitor these various things remotely on your iOS devices as well, so that if you're administrating a server, you've got a way to get back into your server to see how things are going, uh, to troubleshoot issues when you're remote, uh, as well as being able to um, turn services on and off and, uh, and really take care of things, uh, even when you're not sitting in front of your server or when you're not in front of another screen, with the exception of your iOS device. So the first thing we're going to do is let's just take a look at uh, what each of these things offer. Uh, the first is alerts. And so the alerts area uh, basically is designed to give you uh, alerts when certain things happen on your server. So, for instance, if you have a software update, you'll get an alert for that. Uh, when any of your certificates that you've set up before uh, are about to expire, you'll get an alert for that as well. And the nice thing about those alerts is you'll have the opportunity to click a button to renew your certificates automatically, like your push notification certificates and those sorts of things, uh, without having to do anything else. And so this alerts area becomes uh, very important. As you get alerts, you'll get a little number over here that will remind you that you have an alert, and you'll also get it on the server icon down in the dock if you have server uh, turned on. So the nice thing is it will keep track of your system. Uh, if you look at the little gear icon down here, you have the ability to view a particular alert or view all when they show up. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any alerts right now to show you. Uh, but when you get them, they give you all kinds of information about what's going on with your server. Now, you can also set up the delivery of your uh, different alerts on here. And so what you can do is, uh, again, setting, sending out push notifications. If I just click Edit on that, uh, I've got my server. So my server is enabled to send out push, uh, push notifications uh, for my server. Uh, the other thing is, is I can put in email addresses for people that I want to get uh, information on these various services when an alert comes up. So that way, if I'm not in front of my server and an alert goes off, I can actually set up my email to get an alert for all these services. And I can choose to send by email or send by push so that I know that that information is something that I need to take care of. And again, you can see it send, send a test alert right here to make sure that it's working. If I wanted to, I could put in email addresses of different recipients that I want to get uh, that information. So for instance, I'll put in an email right now. Something like that, and I can say OK. And now it's added that information there. You notice now the email uh, fields have come uh, right to the front now, so that I'll get an actual email when any of these things have issues, like when my caching server is full, or my certificate's expiring, or my disk is just about full. Uh, problem with my firewall, mail, all of these different things will, will send me an alert. So it's really nice that you can customize those things, and server then takes care of uh, letting you know when things happen. So that's what the alerts area is. Another way to monitor your server is with the logs area. And so these logs basically give you information about your server. And this is where you can really troubleshoot to say, OK, what's going wrong? What are some things I need to take a look at? Uh, you can see if other people are trying to log into your server. And if you look right here when we uh, click on this, it gives you various logs for the various services on your server. You've got a, a caching uh, service log that you can turn on that tells you a little bit about uh, the information that's been cached on your server. You've got uh, access and error logs for calendar, for your DHCP service, for DNS, uh, your AFP access log, so you can see who's been trying to access your file sharing and any errors that are happening, uh, as well as for your um, for mail, for messages, for net install, for your open directory, uh, as well as profile manager, and then um, software update, VPN, websites, wiki, and then Xcode. So you can do a lot of research in here if something's not going right on your server. You can come in here to your air logs and do a little uh, search on it to see what's going on and what do you need to do to fix those things. And that's where this comes in uh, uh, really uh, handy when you're doing that kind of troubleshooting. Uh, you can get the same information uh, in the console uh, on your server if you go into, into the console uh, utility. And that gives you all of your different uh, logs and things like that uh, on the console. Uh, but this is just a quick way to get system uh, server-specific uh, services and take a look at their logs to find out what's going on and, and see if you have any trouble or, again, to see who's, who's getting access. Now, one more thing you have is you have a stats area here. And what this does is this shows you various stats on your server. 
And so in this particular one, I'm looking at processor usage. You can see I've got the system CPU versus the user in here, and it tells me the difference between there. I can change the time frame. I can pass seven days. I can say the past 24 hours, and it'll show me what my activity looks like in that time frame when I had spikes uh, in my processor usage. Uh, I can use this just to kind of get an idea of uh, troubleshooting. You know, I'd, right here I've got some spikes there. It'd be interesting to know what, what was happening at that point in time. Uh, so it's one way to troubleshoot that. Uh, I can also take a look at my memory usage in here. And so this gives me an idea of how much of my memory have I been using and where does it spike. And you can see in the past 24 hours, I've stayed pretty consistent right here. Uh, I've got 16 gigs of RAM on here. So this is actually functioning pretty well uh, for my server. Again, I can go the last seven days and pull out a little bit. And then now you can get a good idea of how, where I've got different memory spikes and things happening. Uh, I can also take a look at network traffic as well and just get an idea of what does my network traffic look like. Again, same kind of thing. Where do I have spikes? And I can look at outbound versus inbound traffic and get a good feel for it. Uh, if I just pull this back to 24 hours, you can see it, it gives me a little bit more information on the different spikes I've had throughout the day. And so it just gives me that information if I need it. And then on caching uh, service, I can take a look at the bytes that I've used, uh, that's been, that have been served, to my various computers. And so this shows me uh, basically things that have been served from my peers, from the internet, and from the cache itself, as people have been using my caching server to uh, get their own updates instead of just getting them from the App Store, instead of re-downloading that again. So this, again, as you can see, gives us some really good information uh, that can help us manage our, our server and uh, gives, you, gives you some insights into some of the things that are happening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you what this could look like on iOS uh, by looking at an application called Server Admin Remote. Okay, so here we are over on my iPhone. And uh, I just wanted to share this application with you called Server Admin Remote. Now. Uh, some users have reported problems with it under Maverick Server, so your mileage may vary on this. Uh, I know it hasn't really been updated since uh, Mountain Lion Server, but I found that it's actually working in my case uh, with, my, uh, with my server, which is running 10.9 in the latest version. So I just wanted to show this to you because uh, it is something that, uh, if you want to take the risk on it, uh, might work. Uh, well for you because uh, like I found it's worked for me and it's really a great uh, great resource so here it is on the uh, on the Mac App Store uh, or on the App Store I mean for your iPhone and so let me just open it so you can see what it looks like so basically uh, how this application works is it basically connects to your server uh, when you put all the information in and it lets you monitor the things that are happening on your server uh, let me just start off by uh, going into the settings here for a minute so you can get an idea of how this gets set up and let me just uh, click on that or tap on it you can see you can name your server you put your server address in there your username and your password and then it has you select your server version like I said it doesn't have 10.9 on there I just select 10.8 and it seems to work fine then you come over to the services and you basically check off all of the services that you want to monitor just by tapping on it uh, you can do that it only lets you monitor 12 services I wanted to show you that so just know that you have to kind of pick your top 12 that you want to monitor and it pretty much monitors most of the services and things that uh, that you've got out there so once you're done with that you save it and then uh, basically once you're done I'll just say done here uh, it takes you back to the main screen here where you can monitor your server and you can see it tells me how many days of uptime I've got I can monitor the CPU uh, on here as well just to see how my computer is doing with the, C with the CPU I can do it by hour I can tap on day uh, I can tap on week and uh, it'll just basically give me a good overview of how the CPU is doing I can do the same for network just like we saw on the server app uh, and I can do the same thing for my volumes just to see how much disk space do I have free on the various volumes that I've got that I'm running you see and there's my Drobo and so it kinda gives you a, a, a great overview of what's happening with your server uh, down below you can see the various services that are working green means the service is turned on red means it's not and so basically if I just tap into a service like AFP for instance I can actually stop a service from running or start a service if I want to right from my iPhone remotely and it works really nice I can also view the logs uh, basically for that particular service to see what's going on and who's connected and I even have a user list that'll show up and I can kick people off of the services if I want to uh, all, all remotely right from my iPhone so you can do that right in your pocket you can administer your server and the same is true for all these various services uh, as well each of them has a uh, has a different uh, view into what's going on uh, again SMB your open directory web 
And so again, I just wanted to show you this application because like I said, it's a simple way to be able to monitor your server remotely. Uh, if you want to get into this a little more in depth, I did do a screencast on this uh, in the Mountain Lion server series uh, that'll walk through more of the details of it. But in this case, I just wanted to give you an overview of some ways in which you could begin to monitor your server just to make sure the hardware is running well as well as the different services that you've got set up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.